I don't really like convert by sounds and smells you'd really rather avoid. So unless it's for a short adrenaline filled blast, a small sports car, I'll have the roof up and the aircon on. The new Audi A3 Cabriolet is going to have to be rather good. To A, leave my hair alone, and B, change my opinions. Let's start with a test of the obvious stuff. Chopping the roof off always makes a car more flexible and ruins the handling. But our old claim, saying that this car handles with exactly the same position and agility as an A3 with a pearl roof on it. Well, it doesn't. When you hit a big bump, the steering column shudders and the glove box creaks. But despite this scuttle shake, the actual handling of the car doesn't seem to have suffered that much. The nose still dives enthusiastically into corners, and it's a real fun drive along a winding country road like this. Now, British people buy more cabriolets than anybody else in Europe. But the ever-present threat of rain means there is one feature of a drop-top that is essential. How much do you have to slow down before you can put the hood back up? OK, I'm doing 60 kilometres an hour, which is about 40 mph, and it starts spitting with rain. I want the roof up. But of course it won't go, so I take the speed off. 50 kph, nothing. 40 kph, I'm down to 30 kph, and there we go. The roof starts coming up. But this is under 20 miles an hour. Now, coming soon is a BMW 1 Series convertible, which promises to do it at 30 miles an hour. Now that sounds more like it. Driving with the hood up brings us to the next classic problem of a cabriolet. A stretched bit of material is never going to make the cabin as warm or as quiet as a nice, solid metal roof. For a sport model like this one is, you get a three-layered acoustic top, which is nearly as good. In fact, how do you claim that at nearly 90 miles an hour, this is only one decibel noisier than a hard top? So you don't have to shout so much. And of course, one benefit of a cloth roof is it's quicker to get rid of. Here, though, Audi have purposely avoided the fashionable folding hardtop, which takes up so much space and takes so long to fold away. Here, in just nine seconds, I'm getting sunburnt again. And the boot space isn't compromised either, although that's partly because they've redesigned the rear. So, instead of a pert bottom, the car looks like it's been permanently rear-ended. But enough of suntans and suitcases and styling, what about the performance? There are four engine options, two petrol and two diesel. And, because the director liked the colour, I'm in a two-litre TDI. For which prices start at £22,750. But for £500 less, you can get the cheaper of the two petrol engine models, and that'll get you to 60 one and a half seconds faster. Right, that's enough. My hair's standing on end. I keep on getting whiffs of my own acrid going back up. So, can the A3 Cabriolet be recommended? Well, yes, because right now there's only the Volkswagen EOS to challenge it. But if you can wait a little longer, more of the new wave of ragtops are on their way. Firstly with that BMW 1 Series convertible and then a new Mini Cabriolet. So it might be worth waiting to see.